The goal is not to get the person to die. The goal is to follow nature. This time on Unexplained Mysteries, psychic healers. They have the power to heal with the touch of a hand. I do it because that's what I need to do. I've seen cancerous tumors instantly disappear. Sometimes it was almost like a miracle. In our exclusive case studies, we'll hear the amazing stories of people whose lives have been saved. After one session with him, I was healed forever and ever. It's been two weeks of seeing Jeff. It was completely clear. I'd seen a miracle. I'd never seen a miracle. The woman who owes her sight to a psychic healer. I can say as a result of my contact with Henry Ecker. The skeptical doctor who gave psychic healing a chance. I said, this is ridiculous. It isn't going to work, but it's probably relatively harmless, so why not? We'll examine the theories. Many healers seem to have had some serious illness in the past. And talk to the scientists who study spiritual healers. There is an actual physiological change that occurs in the patient. I've seen patients who are paralyzed get up and walk. Ultimately, I don't suppose we are on the side of the grave. With our data files, we'll unlock the mystery and find out if the phenomenon is real or if it's a hoax. I think it's any question that some people seem to have a natural talent or ability to heal others. And we'll give you the final analysis in our UNX report as we uncover what the medical profession doesn't want you to know on Unexplained Mysteries, Psychic Healers. They call it the laying on of hands. Psychic healers that seem to harness some unknown energy to cure disease, injury, and even blindness. It is a practice that dates back to the dawn of civilization. There are parts of the world where these ancient healing rituals are still performed. Shamans cast out what they believe to be evil spirits in elaborate ceremonies chanting by a ring of fire, dancing to the beat of a tribal drum. Sometimes they are able to make people well. Western society has turned to the ancient ways, embracing such alternative practices as acupuncture, yoga, and massage therapy. Those who use these techniques claim the power of the mind can heal the body. There is an actual physiological change that occurs in the patient who has been treated by laying on of hands, and that occurs within certain blood components. According to this school of thought, the message is, patient, heal thyself. Hippocrates was very deeply involved in this. He said all of illness has an emotional component, and we've, we've discarded this. Chronically ill patients come to tranquil Sedona, Arizona to participate in a variety of healing workshops by using channeling, vibrational therapy, and crystals. Patients like Michael Chalum find success where conventional medicine has failed. I've been sick uh, for about six and a half years, an infection in my blood and liver, my intestines. And um, I worked with traditional doctors for a while. And I think their understanding of that type of illness is very limited. And actually, I think what I was doing with them was detrimental to my health. And uh, I've had profound experiences with healers. So I, I know that this is real. At the Manager Foundation, the phenomenon of psychic healing is studied in a clinical environment. What we're really doing, I think, in terms of healing, is teaching people how to uh, mobilize their own internal healing resources. Both positive and negative emotions affect the chemical environment in the body, so every emotion, to some extent, maybe very minor, affects the immune system. When a cure is beyond the ability of an individual, or even a doctor, there are psychic healers, people like Douglas Johnson. I don't even know what it is, but I've seen cancerous tumors instantly disappear. I've seen blind people practically instantly see. Dr. C. Norman Sheely has studied the phenomenon for more than 25 years. He now works with healers in his daily practice. The definition of a healer is really difficult to come by. 
And most healers will tell you that they don't heal. They are channels for healing energy. I start by, of course, asking for the help from spirit because I believe it all comes from the God force. And that we open up to it and let that energy flow and that whatever the problem is, that it is taken care of. Before I went to Douglas Johnson, I couldn't see from here to where your cars are down here. Now that's about 25 feet. But now after Douglas Johnson and the healing, I can see all those buildings all the way back. Josephine Hauck was diagnosed with glaucoma. She suffered blinding headaches as her sight deteriorated. After one session with Douglas, she was cured. I said, Doctor, why? My, the first time I came here, I said, you told me it was glaucoma. And he says, I don't know what happened. And he, he checked me out because he didn't believe in it. See, he couldn't find nothing. When viewed with a thermal camera, immense heat can be seen emanating from Johnson's palms. It's like when you're on a hot, hot day, you see like waves coming up off the pavement. Well, that's what I feel is coming out of my hand. Jeff Boltwood of Glastonbury, England, demonstrates his healing touch. As he does, an aromatic oil emanates from his hands. The camera records this remarkable event in a single unedited shot. All of a sudden, from nowhere, from Jeff's stroking of my hand, it's divine oil, divine oil coming from it. And the smell, the smell was amazing. The smell filled the room just from Jeff manifesting his oil on my hand. Colin Hyde's life almost ended one day while fixing the brakes on his car. The jack failed, and the car landed on his head, crushing his skull. Although he survived, he was left with paralysis, blurry vision, slurred speech, and a cerebral fluid, or CFS, leak. Colin's wife, Jenny, suggested that he see Jeff Boltwood. Within two weeks of seeing Jeff, I had no CSF leak. I had no CSF leak. There was, it was completely clear. And I was, wow, something had happened. Something had happened. After a month of treatments, all of Colin's symptoms were gone. I noticed um, that he became very much more upright and he was very much more fortified with life. The question of why I have certain gifts, it comes up a great deal. Um, philosophically, I often say to people, there's no such thing as why. I don't ever question it in that way. I do it because that's what I'm here to do. Dr. Anthony Schofield of Cambridge University has his own theory. Many healers seem to have had some serious illness in the past. And it seems to me as if they've loosened their ties with this material world and seem to have well, one foot in this world and one foot in the other world. And it's this wounded healer phenomenon that seems to allow them to channel these healing energies. Both Douglas Johnson and Jeff Boltwood had near-death experiences as children. But does this explain the power they both seem to possess today? Ultimately, I don't suppose we'll know this side of the grave, quite frankly, what the true answer is. But uh, all we do know is that healing works. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, the phenomenon of psychic healing revealed. I could feel the heat oozing from his hand like an oven. A medical doctor turns to a healer for help. I asked him to come up to my clinic, and he was excellent. A blind woman sees again with a single touch. Henry Wecker healed my eyes and didn't charge me a dime. The psychic who is amazed by his own power. Sometimes it was almost like a miracle. In an unexplained mysteries case study, 
you'll see the phenomenal results of a psychic healer to the stars. After one session with him, I was healed forever and ever. Meet a mother whose healing treatments reversed an incurable disease. And I had my dress all picked out for what I was to be buried in. She's back and she's doing more than she ever did before. Words cannot express the feeling that one has when this happens. How does it work? I don't have any idea. Uh, does it work? It does. And we'll give you the ultimate account with our Unex report. Stay tuned for more on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, Psychic Healers. The case of Henry Rucker supports the theory that a near-death experience can bring out healing powers. I went to a hospital at 10 years old for a tonsillectomy. I woke up and I couldn't stay in my body. Uh, I find myself on the other side of the room looking at it and it panicked me. And I thought I was dying or was dead. And I tried my best to stay in my body and finally I dropped off to sleep. Aisha Grice is also a believer. 30 years ago, Aisha Grice was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa and was going blind. While attending a spiritual retreat, she met Henry Rucker. I got a healing from him and didn't realize it until I went back to the hospital for my regular uh, checkup. So after he worked on me, then the doctors decide that they've made a mistake. I can see and I can drive and I drive at night um, as a result of my contact with Henry Rucker. Henry's abilities have even won him the praise of medical professionals. Henry, in one or two sessions with a patient, can do more than any psychiatrist or psychologist I've ever known in my life could do in weeks or months of therapy. Rucker and Sheely have worked together for more than 20 years. Today, Dr. Sheely gathers scientific data from each session in an attempt to understand why psychic healing works. Three women suffering from chronic pain are about to undergo a healing with Rucker. Blood is first drawn to measure the hormone DHEA. People with deficiencies in DHEA have all the major illnesses, heart disease, diabetes, depression, you name it. If the DHEA goes up on these patients, any one of them, even 10%, in such a short period of time, I will consider that a near miracle of healing. You have to keep in mind that, that my thing is a spiritual thing and that I really don't have a control over what happens. Um, intuitively, I feel very strongly that these three people are going to be helped tremendously. Blood is drawn again. The DHEA level is tested by an independent lab the results are impressive. In each case, the hormone increased substantially. Uh, I know of nothing that one could do, especially with a single shot, so to speak, in which you could raise DHEA 100% or 55%. In medicine, if we were to give a drug and get this kind of response, it would be a miracle. I see this as a healing ministry. In my ministry, most of the people that I have sought to help, have truly been helped. Whether it be emotional, whether it be a cessation of pain, and sometimes it was almost like a miracle. Henry Rucker healed my eyes and didn't charge me a dime. I didn't get a bill in the mail. I got hugs and kisses when I told him that it worked. This friend of mine took me to lunch and sat me down and said, there's no reason why you should be in this pain. Dean Kraft will heal you. He's real. Dean Kraft was a struggling musician when he discovered his healing powers. Um, I believe that medical doctors are meant to diagnose. I believe very much in medical science. Um, and basically, I work on most of the cases after doctors have given up. His results have been so dramatic that his clients include members of the medical establishment. I've seen patients who are paralyzed get up and walk. I've seen people who have cancer no longer have cancer. 
I've been watching this happening for 12 years. Kraft's talent has been studied by dozens of respected institutions. In one study, he lowered the blood pressure of rats. In another, he destroyed cancer cells in a research lab. And Howard University documented a 40% success rate with his patients. But even he doesn't fully understand why he can heal. We know that it can affect things, but we haven't been able yet to determine what is this energy. You know, energy is a very loose word. I, I don't even like the word energy. You know, it's a very loose word that's used. Uh, but it's the best one, I guess, to describe something that's some type of transference that's taking place. Kraft's reputation has also made him one of the most sought-after healers in Hollywood. I had very bad sciatica for about a year and a half. I was seeing a chiropractor constantly, and that would alleviate the pain for about an hour, and then it would just slowly come back during the day. And I was basically in tears most of the time, and my uh, quality of life was nil. Then I went to see Dean, and um, I remember thinking, well, is this going to work? And uh, after one session with him, I was healed forever and ever. It was my birthday. I was 43 years old, and they told me I had Lou Gehrig's disease. Well, they actually said amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and I still wasn't real sure what that was. Lou Gehrig's disease, or ALS, is a neuromuscular disease that eventually results in paralysis and death. Once diagnosed, there is nothing doctors can do for a patient. She just kept getting progressively worse, and I guess from the time she was uh, diagnosed until she was uh, basically an invalid, it was only about six months or something. Nelda lost the ability to move her arms and legs. Confined to a wheelchair, she prepared for the worst. I gave away most of my good clothing that I had, and I had my dress all picked out for what I was to be buried in. Then, a friend told her about Dean Kraft. And it was just such a relief to talk to him. I said that the doctors say there are, there's no hope, and he said, well, he said, that's not always true. Dean worked with Nelda for three months with no improvement. Then, something happened. In May, Len was showering me and I could move my toe and that was so exciting. Slowly, Nelda's recovery continued. Movement returned to her hands, then her back, and finally her arms and legs. Kraft continued his treatments as Nelda began her own regiment of physical therapy. Within a year, her recovery was complete. It's wonderful to see her and her family being together and, and enjoying life together. Words cannot express the feeling that one has when this happens. Okay, how's that? Everything has changed. She's back and she's doing more than she ever did before. I mean, it's great to have a mother. It really is. Coming up, inside the mind of a coma victim, the woman who lived through the nightmare. I went through this tunnel, just sucked right through it. I was in limbo, I was trapped. The wife faced with a life or death dilemma. The doctors told me that I needed to start thinking about making a decision to either end his life or not. The man with the ability to reach into the dark recesses. My discovery was that there's a way of doing that energetically. We'll bring you the scientific case study of a psychic who put her healing powers to the test. If I hadn't have um, been successful in there, I wouldn't have done it anymore. And finally, we'll explore the ultimate truth about healers in our OnX report, coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, Psychic Healers. Not all healers use the laying on of hands to cure their patients. Some delve into the minds of the sick and guide them toward health. Peter Peelgrave, a TV News helicopter pilot, went out for what he thought would be a routine maintenance flight. It wasn't. Peter's engine failed, and he crash-landed in a reservoir. 
It took paramedics 45 minutes to get to him. Um, had lost consciousness and was floating on top of the water. They airlifted him to the hospital. Um, he didn't have a heartbeat for um, the first 45 minutes. When he got to the hospital, he went into surgery, and uh, the doctors came out and told me that he'd been clinically dead, and he made it through the surgery and was in a deep coma. In an instant, everything changed for this Denver family. Peter's wife and five children prayed for a miracle. With the help of life support, Peter barely hung on. The doctors told me that with the results of the EEG that the prognosis was getting worse and that I needed to start thinking about making a decision to either end his life or not. Desperate, Karen Quinn was open to anything or anyone who could help. She contacted psychic Roger Laborde, who had successfully worked on four similar cases. I can't explain to you um, just exactly what I do because in the, the four separate cases that I've worked with, they've all been different. Roger Laborde is an unusual healer. He claims to have the ability to communicate with coma victims and guide them back. When you have someone who is not able to move and someone who's not able to speak and their focus of attention is elsewhere, to communicate with them, you have to be creative. You have to figure out some other way to communicate with them. My discovery was that there's a way of doing that energetically. Roger put his hands on Peter and, and Peter's arm, and I you know, laid my hand on his other arm. And all of a sudden, I got this really strange sensation of sort of electricity in my stomach, and I just thought, I'm, I can't deal with this right now. I can't. And so I said, well, I'm going to leave you alone, and I'm going to go back and try and get some sleep. I sat in the room for four hours, uh, doing my best to blank my mind. What came to me was to go over and to start talking to Peter about walking through a field of flowers. And I described to him what the flowers looked like, the smells. Uh, I, I described the surroundings. And then I said to him, I said, you know, Peter, when you're walking through a field of flowers, you have to move your feet. And that's when he began to move his feet under the sheet. This small sign was just what Karen needed to believe that all hope was not lost. The doctor came in that night and asked me if I'd made a decision. And I said, well, Peter's made the decision, and I think he's coming back. Dr. Philip Yarnell, one of the most respected neurologists in the country, understands the coma experience better than anyone. We think that uh, they have hearing and that the transmission of sounds from clicks in the ears to recordings on the brain are often intact. Now, whether they hear as we hear so that we interpret sounds as voices or as the uh, messages of loved ones, that we can't tell. Carrie Wood died while in a coma, but she lived to tell. The first thing I saw was the entrance to a tunnel. I didn't actually see it. I just was like, like a magnet drawn to it. I went through this tunnel, just sucked. Uh, that's the only way I can describe it, sucked right through it. I was in limbo. I was trapped. I could not find my way back to my own body. She gives the credit for her awakening to a lifelong bond with Tracy McCallan. I remember uh, entering uh, through her door, literally, and sat at the edge of her bed. And then I said, Tracy, wake up. I had this dream that she came to my house. It was very strange and it was really real. It was like she was sitting on the end of my bed and I was telling her that I needed her. She said, you can't leave me now. I just said, don't go. Like she was going somewhere. And then I opened my eyes. Dr. Arnold Mendel is a clinical psychologist studying the coma experience. He believes coma research is still in its infancy. Years from today, people are going to look back on this period of medicine and dealing with comatose states, and they are going to say, my god, uh, wow, we were making decisions to pull the tubes on this character without asking her or him, or not even trying to communicate with him. I don't think that Roger is a prophet or a saint. I think that he has found a calm and uh, a knowledge and a wisdom of the heart. He helped us. There's, there's no question of that. Never give up. 
only until the individual in the coma states that they want to go, then I would say be responsible and follow their wishes and full life support. But don't give up hope. He's still here and he's still part of us and still here for us to love and to love us. Next, is the phenomenon of psychic healing real? If so, how does it work? Psychic healers are put to the scientific test. They were measuring, you know, how the brain changed. She pointed out the same part where we found something was wrong by using our equipment. Curlian photography documents the healing aura in a Russian psychic. I feel energy pouring down from space and touching me. At these times, I can heal. We try to penetrate the depths of psychology and physiology. Later, one of the most remarkable healings ever recorded on tape. When I let go, walk, Mitchell. Up and back. Walk. And you'll get the climactic analysis in our Onyx report. More secrets, more revelations. Next on Unexplained Mysteries. Psychic Healers. Russia has a long history of psychics and spiritual healers dating back to Ivan the Terrible. Many powerful people secretly asked for advice and used it like Stalin. Brezhnev himself was treated by a psychic healer. There have always been a lot of psychics in Russia. Psychics are an accepted part of Russian culture. They are everywhere, working alongside the traditional medical establishment. Since I was born, I have always known that I can raise the dead, heal, and solve problems that people have on Earth. When I meditate, I connect with my own spirit first, and then with the spirit of the Heavenly Father, the Cosmic Father with the Cosmic Reason. I feel energy pouring down from space and touching me. At these times, I can heal. Russian psychics, like their Western counterparts, believe that their power emanates from their hands. Developed by Russian scientists, Kurlian photography measures bioenergetic fields. A picture is taken of Mazia Salamanaya's finger before a psychic healing. Next, the patient undergoes a series of tests to measure chemical changes in her body. With a trained technician recording the event, Mazia goes to work. My grandmother possessed a healing gift, as well as a gift for black and white magic. My abilities came to me through the genes. Another Curlian photograph is taken immediately after the session. The before and after pictures show a remarkable increase in her bioenergetic field. I felt so happy. I even had tears in my eyes, but it was from happiness. I felt extremely light. I wanted to fly away. The patient undergoes another series of tests. The results are dramatic. All organs are returning to normal. It seems that they are in balance, and she has entered the corridor of health. Since Imperial Russia, we have looked for a material source of paranormal phenomena. In the West, only the psychological part has been developed, while we try to penetrate the depths of psychology and physiology. Credit in England. Carol Everett is a renowned psychic and spiritual healer. When I first started having experiences that I now realize now are unusual, I was about seven. I sort of used to have this strange sensation and then I'd feel like I was going down this tunnel. And um, at the bottom of the tunnel, there was always, you know, a light, really, really bright. And there was all these faces and they were all friendly, you know, and they were really a nice feeling. Working out of a small office in her home, Carol claims that she is able to diagnose and cure a variety of ailments. Her greatest success has been healing tumors and cysts. I don't think I'll bother with this side, with the right hand side. I did that last time, didn't I? Yes. Yeah, well, I think I'll go with this side, all right? And see what, um, see if anything comes up different there. Carol is an empath. 
a person able to feel and absorb the pain of others. In fact, I was getting a little bit worried about it at one time because I thought I might decombust one day, taking on all these, you know, like conditions. Sometimes I, it's like as if they say, well, I, you know, it's going now. And I think, yeah, and I know where it's going. To better understand her power, Carol agreed to participate in a study at the Tokyo Denkei University. Professor Yoshio Machi oversees the experiment. First, she said she would know what was wrong with the patient at a glance. We wanted to know if she could treat the patient, and she said, okay. They um, put this, what looked like a hair net on the head and, and wired it all up. They had all these um, loads and loads of machines with my brain, picture of my brain on the screen. They were measuring, you know, how the brain changed. And there was no activity in the left-hand side of the brain. This is an alpha wave, and this is a beta wave. These were examined when she was diagnosing. At this moment, Carol's right brain became very active. She knew what was wrong instantly. A thermal camera records fluctuations in the body temperature of a female patient as Carol successfully diagnoses an ovarian tumor. She pointed out the same part where we found something was wrong by using our equipment. What happened next surprised Dr. Marchi and his staff. With a team of scientists watching, Carol reduced the size of the tumor in less than eight minutes. To have it scientifically tested and see exactly all the things that you felt and the way that you, you know, change yourself really, I felt quite, you know, pleased with it. And not only that, if I hadn't have um, been successful in there, I wouldn't have done it anymore anyway. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, a devastating car accident changes a young man's life. It never even occurred to me that he would be able to walk or use those legs again. You'll hear from a frantic mother willing to do anything to save her son. I was very uh, skeptical, but I was desperate at that point. The doctor who had to put his skepticism aside. I said, this is ridiculous. It isn't going to work, but it's probably relatively harmless, so why not? You'll witness his shocking recovery with your own eyes. Now I'm going to let go. Walk. Walk, Fletcher. When I first saw him take his first steps, I passed out. And finally, we'll put all the evidence together in our Onyx report on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, Psychic Healers. A car accident on a deserted stretch of Alabama Highway. The driver, 20-year-old Mitchell May. When the paramedics got there, they thought that I was dead. And it took them about 45 minutes to cut me out of the car. From what I've been told, I had about 40 fractures. And I had a couple of inches of bone actually ripped out of my leg. I had the nerves completely severed. It really looked to me like a pride of lions had been chewing on his legs. And they said, we've had enough. And I didn't have any doubts. I just said, amputate if you need to. I mean, it never even occurred to me that he would be able to walk or use those legs again. Just barely hanging on to life, Mitchell was flown back home to Los Angeles. His family checked him into UCLA Medical Center. Most of the skin from uh, just below the knee down to the ankle was gone. And there was just bare bone hanging out with no muscle or skin over it. And it was incredibly painful. And the only way I knew to get rid of his pain was to amputate his leg. He's saying to me, you know, Mitchell, you are not going to walk on your legs again. That's just how it's going to be. And inside of me, a voice is saying, well, we'll see. We'll see. While it seemed to be his only hope, Mitchell would not let doctors amputate. He held on through bone infections, kidney and liver damage, and reactions from the heavy pain medication he was taking. But Mitchell wouldn't give up. I never said go ahead and amputate, but I got this close, this close to it. And it was because I was scared. 
I was scared of having to live with that pain the rest of my life. I knew I couldn't. In a final attempt to bring relief to her son, Lorraine May contacted hypnotist and psychic healer Jack Gray. I was very um, skeptical, but I was desperate at that point. I said, this is ridiculous, it isn't going to work, but it's probably relatively harmless, so why not? He uh, was trained in helping people with pain and healing people, and, but he was not a doctor. I had already, and Mitchell doesn't even know this until now, I had already scheduled his surgery to amputate so. I expected some guy in a purple cape uh, to come, you know, strolling in with a magic wand or something. And here came in the room a totally ordinary looking man. And there wasn't anything that he said that anybody would call mumbo jumbo. There weren't any magic words, so there wasn't anything uh, that wasn't just almost plain good sense. And he looks at me and he says, Mitchell, we can heal your leg. You have whatever you need already in you. It's born in everyone. We're just going to wake it up. I saw Mitchell for the first time get hope. Gray employed the laying on of hands, hypnosis, and visualization therapy. Within a few months, Mitchell dramatically improved. Bones started to grow where they said it couldn't grow. Skin started to regenerate where they said, that can't be happening. Nerve function started to happen again, and they're saying, but, 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 you know, that's not supposed to be able to happen. Again, this took time. I was in the hospital for a year. I was in a wheelchair for a couple of years. I was in metal braces. And each step of the way, the doctors were saying, this is incredible, but this is as far as you're going to get. The healing process continued, with Gray concentrating all his powers on Mitchell's legs. Although doctors said it wasn't possible, Gray believed that one day, Mitchell would walk. Tell yourself, I can walk. Recall how you used to. Now I'm going to let go. When I let go, walk, Mitchell, up and back. Walk. Walk, Mitchell, without crutches. When I first saw him take his first steps, I passed out. I mean, I fainted. I'd, I'd seen a miracle. I had never seen a miracle. All I know is, is that something happened after the faith healer came and nothing had happened before. Uh, as a scientist, I have to conclude that the faith healer made Mitchell well, not me. It's been a long journey from that Alabama highway to the mountains of Utah, but Mitchell May has cherished every step. I uh, race walk every day. I dance every day. I stretch every day. I can run. I hike for miles. I feel so lucky to be alive. Uh, Jack gave me part of himself. I, I definitely, uh, whew, I, uh, I owe my life to him. Next, the Onyx Report. We'll examine the evidence, question the witnesses, and answer the question, are psychic healers real? And if so, where does their power come from? How does it work? Why have they been chosen? You'll hear from the patients, the doctors, the researchers, and the psychics. Then, we'll wrap it all up for you with our Onyx Report, when Unexplained Mysteries returns. Report. Do psychics really have the ability to heal the sick and mend the wounded? Do they channel some universal life force through their bodies? Or is it just the power of positive thinking that brings about these remarkable recoveries? Even the healers don't fully understand their own powers. I believe it all comes from the God Forest. But my thing is a spiritual thing, and that I really don't have a personal control over what happens. It's not a planned process. Once uh, I start laying on of hands, it's sort of my hands go to areas and I sort of follow them. Experts have been able to study the phenomenon in controlled settings and have come up with some startling conclusions. He has an ability to adjust people's 
energy fields in medicine. If we were to give a drug and get this kind of response, it would be a miracle. The results have been so astounding that medical professionals are now using healers alongside traditional treatments. As a scientist, I have to conclude that the faith healer made Mitchell well. Not me. And that's a scientific observation from me as a pure skeptical scientist. Aristotle agreed with this. Uh, Darwin agreed with it. How does it work? I don't have any idea. Uh, does it work? It does. But even with the evidence, most people don't use a psychic healer until all other treatments have failed. They were going to pull life support and let them die. And it was uh, the neurologist's opinion that there was no hope. Basically, I work on most of the cases after the doctors have given up. I said that the doctors say there are, there's no hope. And he said, well, he said, that's not always true. In the end, the most compelling argument comes from those who have been touched and healed. This friend of mine said, there's no reason why you should be in this pain. Dean Kraft will heal you. He's real. He looks at me and he says, Mitchell, we can heal your leg. You have whatever you need already in you. It's born in everyone. We're just gonna wake it up. Even with all the evidence, all the success stories, and all the research, no one is sure how psychic healing works. So for now, it remains an unexplained mystery. Tonight on Biography, they've played rebels, juvies, misfits, and their real lives haven't strayed far from their characters. Matt Dillon. He chooses roles from his gut. Winona Ryder. She is a chameleon, and she is a conundrum. Christian Slater. He was the rebel that we all want to be. Starts tonight at 9, only on Bio.